Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here. Light of the World Ministries in John 8, 12. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Turn your King James Bible to the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 12. Ecclesiastes is generally attributed to Solomon the king, who is considered the wisest man that ever lived, being that he had the Spirit of God with him. him. And uh, sadly, at the toward the end of his life, he... Uh, Ooh, I don't know, had a lot of problems. Had about 300 and something wives and 700 and something concubines, which is kind of like a wife. I guess it's the, the girl on the side, I guess you could say. And, uh, you know, a lot of trouble. Now, the thing is, he married a lot of heathens and a lot of the satanic seed line and you better believe that every single child could claim to be of judah every single one of them all the canaanites or hittites or all the other ites that he married i know he married a uh, daughter of pharaoh he married a bunch. I mean, they're not even all listed to the best of my knowledge. But to the best of my knowledge, he wrote Ecclesiastes at the very end when he realized that everything on this earth was vanity. What is vain or being or vanity? It just means worthless or nothing. You know, you've heard the song, maybe you're so vain. Worthless. That's what it means, worthless. Everything is worthless. You spend your entire life building a business, building a house, and when you die, to who does it go? Ecclesiastes chapter 12 and verse 1. Remember now thy creator in the days of thy youth, while the evil days come not, nor the years draw nigh, when thou shalt say, I have no pleasure in them. While the sun, nor the light, or the moon, or the stars be not darkened, nor the clouds return after the rain. In the day when the keepers of the house shall tremble, and the strong men shall bow, bow themselves, and the grinders cease because they are few, and those that look out of the windows be darkened and the doors shall be shut in the street when the sound of the grinding is low he shall rise up at the voice of the bird and all the daughters of music shall be brought low also when they shall be afraid of that which is high and fear shall be in the way and the almond tree shall flourish. I wish I understood the significance of the almond tree. And if anybody knows, feel free to leave a comment. And the almond tree shall flourish, and the grasshopper shall be a burden, and desire shall fail, because man goeth to his long home his long home. What's a man's long home? The place after life. See, earth is just a short home. 
Where are you going for eternity? Well, that's the long home. Because man goeth to his long home, and the mourners go about the streets. Or ever the silver cord be loosed. Now, I'm not sure 100% on this, but um, there is a group of people that do what is called astral projection, New Age movement. And they claim that their soul and spirit can leave the body and that there's a silver cord that connects the body when they're projecting their soul and spirit somewhere else and leaving the body behind. And in Scripture, God is likened unto gold, and yet redeemed men, those in the faith, are likened unto silver. And the thing is, is if the silver cord is ever loosed, the soul and spirit are separated from the body. You know, it wasn't until I had studied the New Age movement that I understood the reference to this, at least from that point of view. I mean, after all, it says, because man goeth to his long home, and the mourners go about the streets, well, they're mourning your death, or ever the silver cord be loosed, or the golden bowl be broken, or the pitcher be broken at the fountain, or the wheel broken at the cistern. Then shall the dust return to the earth as it was, and the Spirit shall return unto God, who gave it. So obviously here we're talking about death. Verse 8. Vanity of vanities, saith the preacher, all is vanity. That's right, when you die, what is, what, what's left on this earth for you? Nothing. Everything you did will have been in vain. Well, sure, another person can have it. Hopefully, you were able to leave it to a child or a family member. However, oftentimes, somebody else will steal it and take it. Vanity of vanities, saith the preacher, all is vanity. You didn't know they had preachers in the Old Testament, did you? Well, according to the King James, yeah, they do. Verse 9, And moreover, because the preacher was wise, he still taught the people knowledge, yea, he gave good heed and sought out and set in order many proverbs. The preacher sought to find out acceptable words, and that which was written was upright, even words of truth. The words of the wise are as goads. Goads, I believe those are like um, gourds, like pumpkins. No, I'm sorry. Uh, a goad is to provoke or annoy someone so as to stimulate some action or reaction. The 
the cowboys goaded their cattle across the meadows. It's like using a spike stick used to drive cattle. You poke them in the rear, get going. That's what it means to provoke somebody into action. Um, two boys go to a, a high, steep hill overlooking a river. And they were talking about jumping into it from the height. And the other boy goads him by saying, What are you, a chicken? Yeah. Guys get that, girls don't. Uh, guys can be st stupid when we're young. Trust me. Especially when we say I do when it's the wrong one. The words of the wise are as goads and as nails fastened by the master of assemblies, which are given from one shepherd. Well, who is the good shepherd? I hope you know. And further by these, my son, be admonished of making many books. There is no end. And much study is a weariness of the flesh. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. That's right. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment and every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. So, what's the key verse here? When it comes to the Lord, verse 12, And further by these, my son, be admonished, of making many books there is no end, and much study is a weariness of the flesh. Okay. How does that tie in? Well, go to 2 Timothy chapter 2 I guess we'll read the whole chapter 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 1 um, there's a whole lot of people of the you know who Daic you know who Daic persuasion that want you to throw away Paul's letters or epistles. They claim he was a false prophet. When you hear that, run. Don't walk. Rebuke them sharply and run because you're listening to the devil. There's a big, big movement now. Well, first they're going to get rid of Paul. And by the time they're done, they're going to get rid of Christ. So consider that. All right. 2 Timothy 2, verse 1. Thou therefore, my son, son in the faith, right? Be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who may be able that uh, who shall be able to teach others also. Thou therefore endure hardness, endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Now, those of you that have never served in the military, let me tell you something. You, you will learn how to be a hard person. 
I mean, not difficult, but how to endure hardness. You know, there's nothing easy about a soldier's life. It's not always hard, but there are times when a soldier's life is hard. I was in the military, and um, I'll tell you what, I did learn responsibility. Of course, if you don't, they'll kick you in the rear until you do. Sometimes they do have to knock sense into your head. And uh, I'm not halfway joking around either. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. You know, as an example, in wartime, if you're on guard duty and, uh, you know, everybody else is asleep, but you're awake and your job is to look out for the enemy approaching in wartime, to be caught asleep on guard duty was, uh, uh, in times past, a death sentence. Especially if you were in the Roman army. But in World War II, if they caught you asleep on a desert island when you, we were fighting the Japanese or in Europe, the Germans, and you were asleep on guard duty... Um, if the officers didn't order you killed, shot or whatever, or uh, a lot of times the men would do it. How dare you endanger our lives? You know, enduring hardness. You had to be awake. There's a spiritual application to this. Being awake spiritually, not asleep. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No man that warreth. Ah, we're talking about war here. Warreth. No man that warreth entangleth, entangleth himself with the affairs of this life that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. You know, that's the problem with these stupid churchgoers. They don't realize we're in a war. These false preachers, they know we're in a war because they're wolves. They're here to devour the sheep. Yes, what is Christ? When he came, he came as a lamb. But when he returns, he comes as a lion. Big difference. Big difference. No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. And if a man also strive for masteries, yet is he not crowned except he strive lawfully. You know, there's a, a way to wage war. You ever heard of war crimes? You know, everybody talks about the atrocities that the Germans did. My father was a World War II combat veteran, 3rd Infantry Division. He fought in North Africa. He fought in Italy. And he was in on the invasion of southern France. You know, there was two invasions of France. There was Normandy, and then there was an invasion of northern France. And he told me that if they captured 
the SS, or if they surrendered, they were under orders to execute them. I mean, that is horrible. Here it is, somebody surrenders on the battlefield, and then they take them and kill them. Why surrender? May as well fight to the death. Now, that's what the Japanese did. It's a matter of honor. But they didn't do that with all the soldiers. No, just the SS. The SS were the... Uh, they were kind of the political indoctrinated, I guess you could say. But uh, my dad told me that. My dad did not talk much about the war. You know, when you are in a situation like that, you want to spend your life trying to forget. Audie Murphy, the most decorated soldier of World War II, uh, perhaps you've, he, he did movies after the war. I guess the uh, Hollywood crowd thought that uh, he would be a good uh, sell. But he, uh, his wife reported that he'd wake up in the middle of the night in sweats, screaming. I mean, can you imagine? I can't. But we're in a war. We're in a war. And if a man also strive for masteries, yet is he not crowned, except he strive lawfully. The husbandman that laboreth must be first partaker of the fruits. Yes, the person that tends to the vineyard is going to be the first one to partake of the fruit, right? Verse 7, consider what I say, and the Lord give thee understanding in all things. Remember that Jesus Christ of the seed of David was raised from the dead according to my gospel. Wherein I suffer trouble, now that word trouble, a, a, a synonym for trouble is tribulation, Wherein I suffer trouble as an evildoer, even unto bonds, but the word of God is not bound. Therefore, I endure all things for the elect's sake, that they may also obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. Boy, tell that to the pre-trib rapture crowd. Verse 11. It is a faithful saying. For if we be dead with him, we shall also live with him. You ever heard uh, to live for Christ, to die for gain? I believe I'm paraphrasing that right. Verse 12. If we suffer... Uh, it doesn't mean we're suffering as an evildoer. No, if we suffer for Christ, if we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. If we believe not, yet he abideth faithful, he cannot deny himself. Of these things, put them in remembrance, remembrance, charging them before the Lord that they strive not about words to no profit, but to the subverting of the hearers. You know, there's a lot of things to argue about in the Bible. And a lot of those things are of no profit. And I mean like gain. Not, uh, not a prophet as is somebody that speaks the word of the Lord. No. 
Here is the main verse. Verse 15. Keep this in mind. Very important. Study. Study. Not just read. Study. To show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. And the pre-trib rapture crowd will say, see, see, dispensational theology. That's rightly dividing the word of truth. But the trouble is, the word dispensation comes from the Bible four times. One time it re references Moses. The other time it references Christ. Well, guess what? It comes from the root word dispense. You ever heard of a soap dispenser? What is a soap dispenser to do? It gives you soap. What did Moses give? The law from the Lord. What did Christ give us? Grace. But the pre-trib rapture crowd will say, oh no, that's not true. That's a period of time. God deals with us in different periods of time. Uh, there's seven dispensations at least and you're like what yeah and every time you show them a plain verse in the bible it tells you something they'll say oh well that doesn't apply to us where th that's a different dispensation that was for the jew this is for the gentile they're idiots that's why if you can show and prove that the pre-trib rapture is false The pre-trib rapture, dispensational theology, and Zionism always go hand in hand. All three of them are holding hands, skipping down the street. And if you can get rid of the pre-trib rapture, you'll break up that unholy trinity. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. But shun profane and vain babblings, for they will increase unto more ungodliness. Boy, that's a truth. I'm on fake book. Oh, Lord. I don't care what I post from Scripture. You got people that'll... Say, oh, that's not true. Of course, they don't have any scriptures to back it up. I post a page worth of scriptures and they don't have any. And they say, oh, that's wrong. That's wrong. Why? Profane and vain babblings. For they will increase unto more ungodliness. Do you know why you have to study to show yourself approved unto God? Because Jesus warned of deception. People, I have never seen so much deception in all my life as there is today. I mean, people believe that a... Well, they believe every word that's on television. Especially if it's on Fox. Well, guess what? Fox is owned by the News Corporation. Rupert Murdoch. And guess what he owns? The News Corporation owns Harper Collins Publishing, which prints The Joy of Gay Sex, a how to manual with pictures. Isn't that lovely? And they also print The Satanic Bible by the Church of Satan. And that's from Harper Collins. Collins was the fictional name of a vampire family on a series called Dark Shadows. His name was Barnabas Collins. But if you look at Harper Collins, others, other holdings, 
Leon Zondervan. Perhaps you've heard of Veggie Tales. Yeah. Have vegetables tell you about the gospel of Christ? I didn't know carrots could talk. Well, guess what? Zondervan is the largest printer of Bibles and religious books in the English-speaking world. And they're owned by HarperCollins, which is the News Corp, which is Fox Television. So the largest printer of Bibles in the world parent is sister company, parent company actually, prints The Joy of Gay Sex. They print gay porn. And they print the Satanic Bible by the Church of Satan. Uh, do you see a conflict of interest? Well, that doesn't mean anything. Well, maybe it doesn't mean anything to you. But it does to me. And yes, guess what? They are the exclusive printers of the NIV Bible which outsold the King James Bible at least one year. I don't remember what year, but it was a number one be uh, selling Bible one year. Yeah, the NIV Bible. And guess what? They delete the word Lucifer. I believe it was in Isaiah 14. You know, Lucifer fell from heaven. They delete the word Lucifer and they insert the word Morning Star. The Morning Star fell from heaven. Okay. Well, Satan is an angel of light, right? But the problem is, when you go to Revelation 22, guess who says he's the Morning Star? Jesus. So who fell from... What, what Morning Star fell from heaven? Jesus or... Lucifer. Uh, well, the King James says Lucifer fell from heaven. The NIV says the morning star fell from heaven. So did Jesus, the morning star, fall from heaven going to the pit of hell? And oh, by the way, the Messianic, uh, the complete Jewish Bible, supposed to be Messianic, they teach the same thing. The morning star fell from heaven. Oh, yeah. But they don't call him Jesus. They call him Yeshua. Yeshua, the morning star. Oy vey, he fell from heaven. Oh, he's going to the pit. Uh, can you say deception? That's why the Bible says, study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. But shun profane and vain babbling, for they will increase unto more ungodliness. And by the way, people, if you don't believe me all this stuff, prove me wrong. I have spent hours researching this stuff and you know where i learned all that stuff from gail replinger new age bible versions she's the one that did all this research and i decided to check her because i could believe her but i decided i had to prove it myself and being i was a business major in college and one of the first classes I ever took, I remember the professor saying, if you learn nothing else in college, if you stick with it, you will learn how to do research. And guess what? I did. I went to the News Corp website. I went to HarperCollins website. Did a book search. Gay sex. Satanic Bible, right there. They were owned, they owned Zondervan, went to Zondervan, they owned the NIV. Well, they don't own the NIV, they have the exclusive print rights to the NIV. Nobody else but them can print the NIV. Nobody. And I found out that they were all part of Fox TV network. Oh yeah. The Satanic Bible people print printed the number one best-selling NIV Bible. 
Yeah. And every verse, every entire verse that's missing from the Jehovah Witness Bible, that same verse is missing from the NIV. Because guess what? They're the same manuscripts. Yeah. And they'll say, oh, the King James Bible adds verses. Yeah. They add things like repentance and salvation and the words like gospel and blood, the blood of Christ. Yeah, the King James Bible adds those kind of things, they'll tell you. Yeah, make sure you listen to people that print the Satanic Bible and Joy of Gay Sex. And in the original edition of the 1984 NIV, you could not find two verses that said that sodomy was wrong. Matter of fact, the word sodomy didn't even appear in the NIV. It said shrine prostitute. Huh. Is a shrine prostitute a male or a female? Huh. Okay. Is it okay to be a prostitute as long as you don't do it at the shrine? Or is it okay to do it at the shrine as long as you're not being a prostitute and charging money? You know, do a freebie? Uh, my King James says sodomite. But that's a dirty word nowadays. But sh Verse 16, But shun profane and vain babblings, for they will increase unto more ungodliness. Oh, another thing, people. They'll tell you that God went back in time. Did you know God? I mean, uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Not God. Did you know that Satan went back in time? Yeah, the, on CERN, hit that CERN time, uh, machine. Yeah, it's a time machine. They, Satan went back in time and changed the Bible. What? Yeah. Uh, did you ever see the movie Time Bandits? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Satan's... I don't know. I don't know. Uh, uh, God's helpers stole something and they were going back in time. And God was chasing them and Satan was chasing them because he wanted it. And It was a really stupid movie. I never watched the whole movie. But I did see the ending because I was stupid enough to go over to somebody's house watching this filth. But um, evidently, Satan went back in time with CERN and uh, changed the Bible. Well, if, God, if Satan went back and changed the Bible, doesn't that mean he's more powerful than God? God was able, unable to stop him? And if the Bible has been corrupted and it's wrong... Why are there 666 different versions of the Bible? I'm being a little facetious there, but well, not really when you think about it. 666 different versions of the Bible. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they got a million things. Hey, believe in aliens? Why not? Touched by an angel? TV show? You know, angels are good. We got touched by an angel. Well, what about the third of the angels that got caught, uh, cast out of heaven? What about those angels? I don't want to be touched by one of those angels. You know, they got a million different flavors of, you know. Verse 16. But shun profane and vain babblings, for they will increase unto more ungodliness. And their word will eat as doth a canker. Of whom is Hymenaeus and Philetus, who concerning the truth have erred. Oh, that's where you get the word error. Who concerning the truth have erred, saying that the resurrection is past already and overthrow the faith of some. Do you know what this means? Uh... In the church world, they've substituted the Latin word rapture with the word resurrection. So Hymenaeus and Philetus, who concerning the truth have erred, saying that the 
resurrection or the rapture is past already and overthrow the faith of some. Do you know what they're talking about here? The pre-trib rapture. Oh, you're left behind. Oh. Call somebody call Tim LaHaye. We were left behind. We missed the rapture. Oh. Yeah. Did you ever see the movie Left Behind? I didn't. I wouldn't waste my time seeing that filth. Now, you're not, you're not, you know what? Let me tell you something. In Matthew 24, all right, in Matthew 24, verse 37. But as the days of Noe, Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that be were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving a marriage until the day that Noe entered into the ark. Now, Noe is just a Greek rendering of Noah. And that alone is proof that the New Testament was written in Greek. And I used to believe that Jewish fable where they said, oh, well, Matthew was written in uh, Hebrew and then it was translated into Greek. Well, it wouldn't say Noe if, uh, if it was originally Hebrew. It would say Noah. No, it was Noe. Verse 39. And knew not. Who knew not? The wicked. Noah knew because he was told of God. Build an ark. Build an ark. I'm going to bring a flood upon the earth. And the wicked, and knew not until the flood came and took them all away. Uh, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Who got taken away? And took who? And took them all away. Then shall two be in the field. The one shall be taken and the other left. Okay. Two women shall be grinding at the mill. The one shall be taken and the other left. Uh, if you listen to the pre-trib rapture crowd, they'll say, Oh, well, the ones taken were taken in the pre-trib rapture. They were taken up into the sky with Jesus. And the wicked were left behind. Ha, 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 ha. You missed the rapture. Two women shall be grinding at the mill. The one shall be taken and the other left. Watch therefore, for ye know not what hour your Lord doth come. But is that really what happened? At the end of the flood, who was taken and who was left behind? At the end of the flood, Noah got off the ark and was left behind. It was the wicked that were taken. But the pre-trib rapture people say, oh, well, we, we're going to be taken in the pre-trib rapture. How about Luke 17, 26? And as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it also be in the days of the Son of Man. The wicked were taken people and Noah was left behind. In 1 Peter 30, uh, verse 3, I'm sorry, chapter 3 and verse 20. Which sometime were disobedient when once the long suffering of God waited in the days of Noah while the ark was a preparing, wherein few, that is, eight souls, were saved by water. You see, Noah and the eight, well, he was part of the eight, they were saved by water, they were left behind. The wicked were taken first, and Noah was left behind. Luke 17, 27, they did eat, they drank, they married wives. They were given a marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark, and the flood came and destroyed them all. 
The wicked were taken, and Noah was left behind. Verse 28, Likewise also, as it was in the days of Noah, they did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they builded. Lot was left behind, and the wicked were taken. Was What happened to Sodom and Gomorrah? Fire and brimstone, people. Who was left? Lot was left. Luke 17, 29. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. You see, Lot was left behind and the wicked were taken. The exact opposite of what the pre-trib rapture crowd teaches. They're liars. How about 2 Peter 2.12? But these, as natural brute beasts, made to be taken, made to be taken and destroyed, speak evil of the things that they understand not and shall utterly perish in their own corruption. All right, let's go back to 2 Timothy 2 and verse 18. Who concerning the truth have erred? They're in error. They're wrong. Saying that the resurrection is past already and overthrow the faith of some. You see, they pulled the you missed the pre-trib rapture th crap. Uh, it's not a Bible word, but that's what it is. It's crap. It comes from the pit of hell. They pull that you missed the rapture crap in the Old Testament, well, in, in the days of Paul. Yeah, I'm angry. I'm mad. I have righteous indignation. These people are leading. They're going to lead millions to hell, I'm pretty sure. They're going to tell you, oh, you missed the rapture. You missed it. You were left behind. Oh. Saying that the resurrection is past already and overthrow the faith of some. Yeah, they're going to overthrow the lukewarm faith of some. Verse 19. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal. Ah. See, God puts a seal on his servants, the Holy Spirit. Satan puts a mark. Oh, yeah, big difference. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal. The Lord knoweth them that are his. And let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. But in a great house there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth, and some to honor and some to dishonor. If a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified, and meet for the master's use. And meet for the master's use and prepared unto every good work. Flee also youthful lusts, but follow righteousness, faith, charity. Now that word charity, um, when you read the love chapter, uh, the marriage, the marriage chapter where it talks about uh, charity or the love chapter, uh, charity and love, in the Greek, uh, it's same word is translated both ways. And let's face it: if you have love for your neighbor and they're in a hard and they're in a hard place in a bad way, you'll have charity for them. And if you have charity, true charity, it shows forth love. And I'm not talking about when these rich people get on television. And write a check to Planned Parenthood to show their charity because they care. Yeah, we're going to kill the unborn because we care. And they're on a, you know, and they're getting their tax deduction. 
and they're on television. Now, when you when you do charity, the Bible, uh, Christ says, don't let your right hand know what the left hand's doing. Or maybe don't let the left hand know what the right hand's doing. I don't know. Something like that. But follow righteousness, faith, charity, peace, with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. But foolish and unlearned questions avoid. What? What does that mean? Oh, well, can, can God make a rock so big that he can't pick it up? Uh, I, I've never, uh, I, I, it's very rare that I've heard such foolishness. Can God make a rock so big that he can't pick it up? Huh, I don't know. Maybe I should spend the rest of my life trying to figure that out. No. But foolish and unlearned questions avoid. Knowing that they do gender strifes. And the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach, patient. In meekness, instructing, instructing those that oppose themselves, if God peradventure will give them unto, uh, will give them repentance, repentance to the acknowledging of the truth, and that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil, and that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil who are taken captive by him at his will. You see, people, we're to study, not just read, study. Very important. Why? Because there's going to be deception. All right, let's go to, Ma I'm sorry, Luke, Luke, Luke the physician. Luke chapter 21 and verse 5. This is a companion chapter to Matthew 24 and Mark 13. This is an end time chapter. Verse 5. Luke 21 verse 5. And as some spake of the temple, how it was adorned with goodly stones and gifts, he said, As for these things which ye beheld, the days will come in the which... There shall not be left one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. Oh, so when you read Matthew uh, 24, you know, Peter and all the rest of them, they were probably pretty amazed, impressed, I guess, at the uh, temple and saying, oh, master, look at these, this magnificent building. And Jesus told them there would come a time that there wouldn't be one stone left upon another. I've said it a few times, and I'll say it again. Jesus said there wouldn't be one stone left upon another. So when they tell you the Wailing Wall is part of the temple, either the Wailing Wall is part of the temple, or Jesus is a liar. Take your pick. I pick Jesus. Verse 6. As for these things which ye beheld, the days will come in the which there shall not be left one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. And they asked him, saying, Master, but when shall these things be? And which sign will there be when these things shall come to pass? And he, Jesus, and he said, Take heed, listen, pay attention. Take heed that ye be not deceived. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ. And the time draweth near. Go ye not therefore after them. Be not deceived. This is why we need... Not just to read, but to study the Word of God. You know, I mean, the, the left behind thing. Those that don't study the Bible, 
You know, they read books by Tim LaHaye. And guess what? Uh, <laughs> you know, they're going to they're going to think, "Oh, I was left behind in the pre-trib rapture. What would happen if all the people in a church were sent into camps to be executed? How many people would lose their faith? Why, Jesus told us we'd be out of here in the pre-trib rapture. It didn't happen. You know, he must be a false prophet. But you know whose were right? Why, they've been telling us for almost 2,000 years that Jesus was a false prophet. Wow, maybe we should have listened to them, huh? That's what uh, they're going to be saying. Jesus never taught the pre-trib rapture. Your pastor might have taught it because he learned it in Bible cemetery. Yeah, Bible cemetery. Yeah, that's where, you know, the apostles were taught by the Holy Spirit. Your pastor was taught by the spirit of a cemetery. Yeah. In Matthew 24, 24, For there shall arise false Christs and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that if, if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Oh, yeah. Deceive. People are going to be deceived. I've never seen so much deception in all my life. I mean, there are people, they are being paid to go to Christian sites and spread lies. Yeah, I've seen them. In 2 Timothy 3.13, But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Oh yeah. That's it's it's getting it's getting worse, people. In 2 John 1, 7, uh, 1 and verse 7, 2 John 1 and 7, For many deceivers are entered into the world who confess not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. This is a deceiver and an antichrist. Oh yeah. Many deceivers are entered into the world. You know, people, heresies have consequences. I'm just curious how many people are going to lose their faith when they find out that they're going to have to face the beast and die for their faith. Jesus warned us over and over and over we would have tribulation in this world. Trouble. And that we might actually have to die for our faith. I mean, you know, under communism a hundred years ago in Russia, untold millions died for their faith. But you come to, uh, I don't know, let me pick on Georgia. You go to any Baptist church in Georgia, I don't know, maybe 99 point something or other, and they all teach the pre-trib rapture, almost every single one of them. What is going to happen to those faith of those people when they find out that they're left behind and they're going to have to choose between dying for the faith or denying Christ? They were taught they'd never have to make that choice. Oh, God hasn't appointed us under wrath. 
God would never do that. that God's, a, God's not a wife beater. He wouldn't make us suffer. That's the actual opposite, totally the opposite of what Christ taught. They taught trouble in this world, suffering. Boy, you don't, you know, <laughs> you go to Joel Olstein's church or uh, whatever, you know, you'll never hear that stuff. Never. Evil seducers war wax worse and worse. You know, there was a time that Billy Graham, Billy Goat Graham even taught, uh, preached a decent message. Yeah. Yeah, they always preach in the beginning. And then they slide. When they get everybody's confidence and trust, they slide that little poison in there. They slip that little poison in there. Here, drink this. Drink the Kool-Aid. Jesus loves you. Yeah. Beware, people. Beware. All right, well, this is going to be part one of a series. I'm not exactly sure what series, uh, but we'll figure it out. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' precious name. All in Jesus' name. Amen.